What's going on, everybody? We are finally back after a week off. We are back for Power Season 3, Episode 9. I called the shots. Let me just tell you something. I don't care what nobody's saying. Angela is trash, all right? Angela is trash. Tommy had me worried for a second at the beginning of this episode because it starts off with Tommy in a room with Ghost, and Ghost is just standing at him like, you know, hmm, I can't trust this motherfucker. He lied. Let me try to put it in there, you know, see what type of answer he'll give me if I ask him a question. Because as soon as he did that, he was like, you know, where you been at and all this stuff. Um, you can ask a, uh, answer the phone calls for this person, but you can't answer the phone call for me and all this shit. He was like, yo, I was with Milan. Milan showed me to his warehouse and just showed me all around. And then I'm thinking like, well, damn, because I'm going to be honest. I wasn't expecting at this point in time, uh, if my tongue is red, it's because I was drinking some juice. Okay, uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, wasn't expecting for Tommy to just go ahead and say, yeah, I was with Milan. I thought he was going to lie about it or just say, fuck it all. You know, but at this point in time, Tommy does not give a shit. Tommy is just feeling himself because Milan is bigging his head up. Because we saw when he was in um warehouse with Milan that happened that night that was in the last episode. He was basically showing him around to all his people and everything and saying that he's his new apprentice. I said, <laughs> new apprentice? Dude was just like, one of his dudes was like, wait a minute, he ain't one of us. I said the same thing. He was like, no, he is one of us and that's how you're going to treat him. I said, you know what? Y'all playing with fire up in here, Milan. I don't know what you're trying to do, but um, that shit's going to backfire, okay? Because I honestly feel like Every, like I said all the time, they like to play on Tommy and make it seem like he's this weak motherfucker. Yes, he has a coke problem. You need to stop that shit, clear his mind. But they try to play on his weaknesses, the fact that he basically has no one. And make it seem as if um, the only person that's supporting him is James. And he's basically a little lackey to James, a.k.a. Ghost. And, you know, without him, you can be this and you can be that. You're not really weak. You can do this. And then it's like they're trying to get him to flip on James and do this and do that. I don't think it's gonna work i really don't think it's gonna work i think honestly that after we already started the season last year um uh the season with them going back and forth at each other trying to kill each other and all this stuff i don't think tommy really gonna you know flip on james like that i think he's just playing a role for right now okay so moving on from that let's just get this out the way tyreek like we were so disappointed two weeks ago in this little boy like you could just tell he's around too many um, rich people and too many people that ain't got problems. He grew up in a nice neighborhood. He didn't grow up in a hood. His parents didn't grow up. Teach him real. They did not teach him the right things, given that they came from the hood. You gonna be in this drug game. You need to teach your kids that, hey, you cannot talk and be chummy with every goddamn body, okay? I don't care if they don't even tell them exactly what it is that they do, but you need to tell them that, all right? Dre was like, where the fuck was you at? Last night, he was like, I was with my friend Slim. And it was like, you know, it was cool. He just took me to the neighborhood and told me about my dad and all this stuff. And he was like, okay, well, you know, you need to tell me what's going on before you do some shit like that. And, you know, he trying to be your friend. But remember, I'm your friend, okay? I'm your friend first. You need somebody to kick it with, you come kick it with me. See, this is the dilemma with Dre because Dre is playing on him. Dre knows that he's trying to fuck with Tyreek to get to Ghost, okay? And he knows that motherfucker is evil, so he gonna go to the thing that he loves, one of the things that he loves most, and that's his children. And at this point, Tyreek is a weak link right now, and he's easy to manipulate, easy to, you know, take over and all that stuff. And Dre sees that. Even though Dre is working with Kanan out of fear now, you know, now it's out of fear. In the beginning, he was just playing both sides. He didn't give a shit, okay? It wasn't nothing to him. Now it's out of fear because he basically threatened his own family, all right? But he kind of cool with Ghost now. And so it's like seeing all this stuff is just, you know, getting to him or whatever. He's trying to protect Tariq, too. I was like, oh, Tariq, open up your motherfucking eyes, okay? You just, you're playing games with me. I'm just so disappointed. I was so disappointed. We was all disappointed. We was all so disappointed in Tariq. I cannot believe this. But anyway, moving on from that, um, Knox and Medina goes to Tommy Egan's house, okay? Because there was some stuff going on. And you remember Medina told, when um, Knox told him finally what it was that he was talking about, and she was like, you still on this case and you obsessed and, you know, I can do this and I can do that. But when they finally go to um, Kate Egan's house, they looking for Tommy. 
uh, Kate first put it out there that Tommy isn't there. They was like, when was the last time you seen her? Oh, that night when we brought pizza, showed on the receipt, sold on the date on the receipt, and all this stuff. And at the same time, while Medina is talking to Kate, Greg, mind you, they don't have a search warrant to be doing all this stuff. But she did invite them in. She said, oh, the detective asshole, you must be detective dickhead. I, I laugh. But, um... Greg Ash is going around the apartment just looking at stuff, lifting up stuff and all this shit. I'm like, oh, I can't stand him. I cannot stand him. But when everything checked out that, you know, they don't have nothing that they can um use against Tommy to, you know, kind of ask his whereabouts, they was just going to leave. And the look on Medina's face is like, you brought me down here for this bullshit. I told you to leave this shit alone. Okay, and we're not coming up with nothing. You know, that's how he was looking at Knox. But when they was walking out, he saw something in the garbage can, and he looked down, and he t pulled it out. It was Angela Valdez's card, okay? And so, back at the office with Angela, she's this dumb bitch. Oh, my God. You were so stupid. How did you get this job? Because you are just, even I would have knew not to do what you just did. I understand you're trying to find out what's going on with Hugo and, you know, where he at. And no, no, this phone, I guess, that James gang, because she don't know it's Hugo's phone. Okay. So you go and flip the phone over. I understand you're trying to see the numbers and whatever. I would have did that same thing. I'll be the look. Okay. Okay. This number is called very frequently. Let me dial this number off the premises somewhere else where it's quiet, bitch. I'm sitting here like, do not dial this number. Do not dial this number because then you text and say, hey, we need to meet up or no, hey, we need to talk. And then I'm sitting here like, okay, that's fine. And then Mike opens up the phone and it's Mike number on um his burning phone like, okay, nigga, I ain't heard from you in a minute, so what the fuck? And then he finna call. So you gonna pick up the phone with the helicopter outside just blurring, you know, the wind and the, 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 the what is it called? Um, repellers and all that stuff. They're just going around and going around. The blaze just going. We hear the sound. We hear the sound. <sighs> he get the, um, fucking phone on and you gonna decide to flip that bitch open and he can hear the shit. I was like, Mike is finna fuck himself up. But see, Mike was smart because Mike didn't say a damn thing. But see, if, if Angela was smart... She would have noticed the shit, too, because Mike noticed the helicopter. You didn't hear the helicopter on the other side, too? I'm sitting here like, oh, my God. Mike hung that phone up, bitch. Okay? And did not say not one word. And then Angela was trying to get to wherever she was going. I don't know if she kind of figured out something. But she ran into Knox and um, uh, uh, Sax. And Sax was like, you know, they're about to, we might be exonerated from this whole case because... They found out that somebody went to look at the records for Lobos and tried to get uh, into the database in the prison uh, records for Lobos. And this was trying to find his location. And this was after we put it out there that Lobos was dead. The only people that know that he wasn't dead and knew, where his, knew his location was, was us. So it couldn't have been somebody. In the, um, they made it seem as if it couldn't be somebody in the department that did it. So Angela's like, cool. She was just real short with it. Like, okay, fine. I got to go to the bathroom. So when they do all that, we get this other scene with Angela. She's going to meet up with Ghost. And Ghost, she basically like, who the fuck did you tell? And he was like, what you talking about? It ain't going to come back to us. He was like, guess it is going to come back to us. Whoever you told shouldn't have known this because the people that's in our office already knew where his location was because we knew he wasn't dead. This person was t looking to see was he dead or not. And he was like, it was Proctor. And he was like, see, that's going to come back on us because... You know, Proctor is looking for his location to see where he's at or to see if he's dead or not. And we already know that. So now it's going to all come back to us. Some shit like that. I was just sitting here like, damn, more problems. More problems just keep popping up. More problems. I'm just sitting here like, y'all just fucked all the way around. <laughs> y'all really are. And, you know, at this point in time, this is when Ghost tells uh, Angela that, what's going on with you? What, what about your boy Knox? Because he came over to the case house. He was like... Kate, he ain't even fucking with Tommy and all that shit no more, okay? That's over and done with. He was like, guess he is because he was over there. And Kate, as drugged out as she be, she remembered that was him, all right? And so she gonna say, whatever. She gets on her phone and she texts Knox and was like, can I come over? Bitch, she over there at his house. Can I come over? Can I come over? Can I? Listen. 
You will not do it to me tonight, okay? I'm not finna go there. That was my motherfucking song. May Aaliyah rest in peace. Bitch, but anyway, moving on. Uh, it's a song for everything. She gets over there. She's sitting on Knox couch, y'all. Like she lit at and stuff. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is really going on? Now, see, last week she fucked him. She fucked him. And I'm telling you, I said she was trash last week because, and let me tell you why. She used the oldest trick in the book trying to get Knox to get off the trail of James and, and, and Tommy. Pussy. That's what she used, okay? She played up on his emotion thinking that she could use her sex to get him to stop looking into stuff, but it did not work because he's still looking into stuff and she's still continuing to do it, to do this fake relationship with him, you know, kissing all on him, trying to make him feel like, oh, well, what else is going on? Because do you really think Tommy did it? Because do you really think Tommy is one of Lobo's guys and all this stuff? And do you think this? Do you think that? I'm like, Angela, Angela, he see through this bullshit. He is not buying it at all. But you can keep on playing. He gonna get some free pussy out of it. That's all it is, okay? Moving on from that, um, talking about some games being played. Tasha was up there trying to help out in um school, getting I guess career day or whatever uh ready. She get a call from one of her girlfriends. Hey girl, how you doing? What's up? How you seen Keisha? We ain't seen her all day. She ain't come in and open up and we ain't see her last night. She ain't close up or nothing like that. Girl, no, I ain't seen her. I called her and see what's going on. I said, damn. Oh, my God. And Tommy really killed Keisha because I know Milan told him to take care of that. But they just left us hanging two weeks ago. We don't know if he killed her or not, but now she ain't at work. And we're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't do it, bitch. Don't do it. I'm so mad. Also, they was having an issue with Ruiz, okay? They trying to sell these pills. And, you know, um, Milan told them you got to pay for it up front. Marie said in the meeting he's not paying for a product that he's not confident in or that he don't know nothing about. And so Tommy going to collect the money and he was true to his word. He's not about to pay for that shit. And he said you're going to have to take it up with whoever the fuck you're going to take it up with because it ain't going to be me, bitch. And, um, you know, when Ruiz walked out, Ruiz was talking to his dude, Poncho, and was like, how do you feel about it? He was like, you know, at the end of the day, we still selling drugs, and we need to just get up with the time. Sell to these kids, because my nephew or whoever the fuck, they be doing their exams and stuff, and they eat this shit up. And I was like, that is true. That girl in college just started to, that is true. And I said, oh, Paul Ruiz, he might finna get his ass capped. So, James is in his office, okay, and next thing you know, they bring in somebody a blast from the past. Who could it be? But Cantos, okay? Girl, let me tell y'all something. Didn't we all say it was a bad idea to um get rid of Cantos? Cantos knows too fucking much. I think James was just feeling himself a little bit too much, and he wasn't really thinking when he said, Cantos, you gone. I understand Cantos. Cantos was doing what he had to do, you know. He... He was still kind of loyal to James, but he still played his position with um um Stern when Stern took over. But he played it to the to the max to the like to make himself feel important. So I understand why James was in his feelings a little bit, but he still could have at least demoted him. He didn't have to get rid of him, okay? Because Cantos knows too much. Cantos come up in there and basically was like. He works and managed to do the same thing that he do over that he did over there at True, over there with the uh, Amos and Andy little motherfuckers, okay? That club that Karen Bassett got going on and all that stuff. And, you know, he doing all that and inviting him to come over and all this shit. And he going to tell him, bruh, uh, fuck all these pleasantries and shit like that. You know, I got to get mine. So let me tell you something. Since you fired me, I need all them um, guests and names that I gave you from Stern. I need them bitches back. And I looked at him like... So I'm supposed to just go ahead and give it back to you? No, you should know. He was like, I could have said a whole bunch of stuff about you. I could have let your shit just go all out, put your business all out there, but I didn't. So give me them names. And I'm sitting here like, James, you going to give him them names? And James was like, okay, bro, I'll give you two. I'll give you a few days. I'm going to give it to you in a few days. I said, I don't trust that shit. James, you better shoot that nigga. Now he's a liability, okay? You done made him a liability. He ain't even really had to be. All right, so after that, um... What was going on? Tommy meets up with Milan and basically was like, you know, um, Ghost knows something's going on. Well, Ghost asked me where I was and I told him. He was like, what did you tell him? I said, I told him I was at the warehouse or whatever. He was like, you know, when a person asks you a question, especially a person like Ghost, they already know the answer. And he was like, what you talking about? He was like, because look, 
I already know he was following you. He followed you to where you were last night because my dude was following him and seeing him or whatever. And I was like, you know, this ghost just needs to know what was going on. He wants to be in a loop and all this stuff. And it was like, you know, he's not thinking about getting out the game. He just wants to know. He's like, you know what? He is your anchor. You need to get rid of that motherfucker. That's basically what he told him. He said if he keeps on doing this stuff, you know, trying to double cross and do all this other stuff because Milan is not dumb. He knows Ghost got something playing. Okay, come on now. He he can't be in the game and be the head honcho this long and not realize his moves. I mean, he's been working around this guy for a minute, okay? And so, he knows when something is up. And he was basically like, if you don't get that motherfucker in line, it's going to be your ass. I'm going to put you down in that pit let them beat your ass and I'm not going to let tell them to stop this time. And so, Tommy had to have this confrontation with, um, with a ghost and tell him so what the fuck you doing bruh you having me followed you know where i was milan already know that you knew where his warehouse was and where i was and stuff like that you need to stop this shit it was like after all this time i chose holly over you and you still doing this stuff you need to fucking choose me or else they gonna kill me okay that's what you need to do choose me bitch what the fuck y'all okay that been up in my head this whole time y'all ain't say shit y'all trash anyway so, moving on from that, um, at this point in time, he was like, okay, go said, I choose you. We good. I hear you, what, whatever you're saying. But, um, you know, I get this stuff from Ruiz, and he know, he's talking about what's going on. And he was like, yeah, he, he trying to resist a little bit, but what I think we should do is uh, set up a meeting or whatever so he can go in here and talk to Milan and make him feel special or whatever, and then he'll be on board. Tommy was like, cool, cool, whatever. So Ghost go ahead and um, text uh, Ruiz and was like, go ahead and set it up. Okay, call that, put that number in. Mind you, the whole thing was a plan so that Ruiz can go ahead and get with Milan because... Remember, Ghost told um, Ruiz, you need to go back to the FBI and you need to basically go snitch on Milan. That's what you need to give them. So we see this scene with, excuse me, Greg and Milan, Greg and Ruiz in the bathroom and they're talking. And it's not that they met by chance. They have been interacting with each other because, you know, this is the secret way that they don't want people to know that they're interacting because Ruiz don't want people to know that he's still talking to the FBI and he's trying to, you know, snitch on Milan. Here's the thing. Greg is so clouded and he is so determined and he is so there go again. Bent on getting the revenge and stuff against Angie because he got hurt by this bitch. This bitch didn't burn her. They didn't try to kill him. So it's like less time to get this shit back. So I'm finna get James St. Patrick. He is so tunnel vision on James St. Patrick that he does not realize that if you get Milan, you damn near get the whole fucking organization, okay? But his whole thing is, I want ghost that's what he keeps on saying he don't say joe ghost he say james st patrick but he's like if he's in that meeting i need you to get him on this um recorder he gave him this little buddy recorder and all this stuff he said if he's not there i need you to direct the um conversation to make it sing and uh, make it talk about him okay make it mention him and his dealings and all this stuff and i'm sitting here like first of all the way that that would happen is if Ruiz had to put out there, somebody actually say that Ghost is James St. Patrick because they would never, ever say that. We keep talking about them as two separate things. And, you know, Knox is trying to get them to say that they're the same people. But that has yet to happen. So how are they going to do that? I don't know. That's going to be so obvious if they, you know, just put it out there that he that, you know, the same person. And then everybody going to know that he's fucking around with the FBI. You know, like he got a wire or some shit on him. But anyway... Moving on from that shit, talking about Knox again. Knox then went, this is after him and Angela then fucked around again. She in the bed sleep. He then came outside into the living room, went through her purse, found the fucking burner phone, bitch. I said, this girl is walking around with the phone in her bag and she gonna bring it to fucking Knox house. Listen, this is, she has got to be the dumbest bitch on this show right now. I am sorry to say that, but that is what it is because it's not making sense. Like, girl, you in the same building with this person, you, you call him and y'all both hearing helicopters and you expecting this person to answer. You can't click it. Okay. Then you're going to keep the phone in your person. You're carrying it around with you. And not only that, you take it to fucking Knox apartment. This boy, I don't give a damn if you threw him, but you should have been on alert that he's still going to be trying to like, you know checking you out i don't 
Like, girl, I would have put that shit somewhere in the safe or something. Like, you should have put that gun. Okay, that's what I would have did. Like, you doing too many stupid steps and too, you getting yourself fucked up, all right? And so, basically, he gets the phone. He see the phone. He opens it up, whatever. He turns it around, take the battery out, take a copy of the SIM card. Bitch, I ain't had a SIM card in the phone in a long time. <laughs> T, <Teen> iPhone. <laughs> Listen, iOS 10. I was um holding off on updating, but them iMessages is lit as fuck on there now, okay? We got graphics and shit, bitch, all right? But uh, anyway, moving on from that, I'm sitting here like, ain't this about a bitch? She come out here, Greg, I thought you was gone. <laughs> he was like, no, I'm right here. I said, look at this dumb bitch. And of course, he gonna go and get his connection to find out you know who is the owner of the sim phone and and what's on it and all this stuff the sim card or whatever who who the burn phone goes to she goes and call her connection to because she looking up the information trying to see going through the text messages at her job trying to see what was going on and then she come across the uh text message where um What's his name? Mike was given to old boy to Hugo telling him that I got your money and I got your passport, all that stuff. And then she looking at the flight information that was put up there. It was the, the code, you know, so you can get the flight number, whatever, the confirmation number. That's what it was, confirmation number. And you find out that it was, you know, where it's going to and all this stuff and who did it. It don't say who did it, but it has an address and it's a Brooklyn, New York address. So she get her girl on the phone and was like, yo, can you look this information up and see who paid for this ticket? It didn't come back to anybody. It came back to a prepaid card or whatever. And it didn't have no, um, you know, no information on it like that. I said, girl, you're doing so much. You're doing too much. Too much of nothing. Okay. Too much of nothing. Come on, Spice Girls. Y'all just don't know. Anyway, I told you it's a song for every occasion. So, we move on to um, Tyreek. Tyreek and Lil Raina, they in the, uh, with Tasha. They having Daddy Daughter Day, uh, Career Day, I guess. And, you know, they had the parents come out there talking. And then he get introduced. And he was like, yeah, I own three clubs. Oh, my God. You own a club. Do you get celebrities that come there like Odell Beckham and Fetty Wap? I said, little white boy, of course you would know who the fuck a Fetty Wap is. They always know. I'm telling you, there's more white people that listen to rap music and all that shit than it is us. I'm telling you. You know, look at the statistics. And you're going to say something. Oh, my God. Like a Beyonce. Do they come up in the club? I said, Beyonce ain't coming into no goddamn truth when 40. 40 right down the street bitch get the fuck out of here anyway it was like you know talking about the whole thing and then um <clears throat> Raina asked is it stressful or whatever to own a club and he was like yes and then he kind of missed that you know owning a club he put everything else on the back burner and it kind of messed up the family and stuff like that Tasha's Tasha's feeling all what he's saying he basically admitting that he know that he fucked up okay and she taking it in like And so, at that time, we thinking we having a, this gushy moment because Ghost at this moment is just putting it all out there. Child, Tyreek don't give a shit. Tyreek is on his phone texting Slim. Hey, you want to meet up? All right, I'm going to meet you up later. I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? Mind you, Kanan is up in the um, fucking restaurant or whatever, a uh, hood restaurant. Here comes Ty, uh, uh, Dre in there talking about some. What the fuck you doing with Tyreek and all this shit? He was like, "What you didn't think Tyreek was gonna tell me what you said?" All this stuff. He was like, "No." He was like, "Um, you can't tell Ghost if you wanted to because if he you tell Ghost that I'm here, that means that you have to admit that he's I'm here." And you didn't say nothing and that you knew all this time. All right. So you basically a lose lose situation. And um you chose me right about now. So that's basically what it is. And you need to chill the fuck out. Cause if I wanted to cap that little nigga, I would have capped him. I said, bitch, that's what you was gonna do until you found out that the boy don't give a fuck about ghosts at this moment. Stop fucking playing with me. All right. I said, damn, Dre. Dre go out there trying to see Tommy, you know, and was like, yo, Tommy. He was like, what? Yo, okay, I know you don't fuck with me like that, but you need to talk to uh, Tariq. Tariq, he up there, he going through some shit with his parents and stuff like that. He was like, okay, fucking Dr. Phil, whatever. He was like, look, bro, I ain't trying to step on your tracks and shit like that. But let me tell you something. It's because of me that your ass still here. Oh, yeah. Um, Ghost didn't tell you that? I was the one that got the information that the Koreans was about to cap your ass. So I the one that told uh, Ghost, and he the one that went out there and took care of that stuff. Tommy didn't give a fuck. He wasn't finna say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Tommy was like, okay, and, and got in that car and drove the fuck off. I said, look at this shit, bitch. 
So, at the end of the little uh, career day thing, and, you know, Tasha was like, oh, my God, go. She, thank you for coming. And, you know, they had a little family time and all that stuff. Next thing you know, he get this phone call from Ruiz. Okay. So, basically, everybody is setting everybody up, all right? Because this little meetup that Ruiz had with Knox in the bathroom, this was all going according to Ghost plan, Okay. And, you know, Ruiz told him that, hey, he took the bait as soon as I said this. And as soon as I called up there to him and all this stuff, he took the bait. And he wanted to meet me not in the FBI building, but in the bathroom or some other little joint or whatever. And so Ghost was like, okay, cool, because that means that he's working off the books. So Ruiz is telling him all the stuff that's going on, what he want him to do, what he want him to wear, all this stuff. And he was like, you know what? You cannot say my name. You cannot say Tommy, implement Tommy or anything in this stuff. He was like, it's going to be hard when Tommy not going to be there or some shit like that. He was like, well, you're going to have to make that shit work. So eventually, they had this little thing. They had this meetup. Um, Ruiz come there with uh, Poncho and everything. And it's my lot cock at it. What is it's cock at it is when the eye go this way, but one of his eyes go this way. Okay, so I noticed that I was like something is off, and I just noticed, you know, he came up in there. Poncho got into his little feelings because he was like, y'all not already searched us. Why he needs to be searched again? Tommy was there. He was like, you know, he good with me, so I trust the dude, and you don't need to trust him again and all this stuff. And then my mom was like, well, if you trust him and all this, go ahead and search him yourself. So Tommy was searching him. Ruiz and you know all of a sudden he stopped and I'm like oh shit he filled the wire no he filled the little bug thing and he gave him now I kind of found out it was some cigars and he was like okay cool so Tommy dismissed himself and then uh, Ruiz told Pancho to go out and you know to keep an eye on everything and all this stuff and they sit down and they sit down over some food now every time they put a plate of food or any type of time I see Milan on here eating something I'm like is it really meat like chicken pork beef is it really that or is it human you know you just don't understand it you just don't know because he eat people all right so they finna get this meeting underway My, meanwhile Knox is over there talking to Medina had him meet up and Medina's like what the fuck do you want he was like okay hold on hold on I got something for you all right just listen, okay? I'm finna tell you. Medina was like, bitch, if you don't hurry up the fuck up and tell me this shit, I'm finna get the fuck out of here, all right? He was like, no. If um this stuff that I got goes down and say that, you know, solve the Lobos murder rap, I'm gonna let you have it and I'm gonna let you say that you solved it if this all pans out. Basically, he was telling him about the burner phone because he got a text to see, uh, a text telling him who the burner phone number is and... Um, he was talking about what was the number that was Lobo's number. So Medina saw, found, has, just so happened to have that number in his phone. Okay. And then it was like, we need to find out this, the, uh, 0158, 1458, you know, number, some shit like that. Um, Mike's number. Okay. And so once we find that out, we'll see who it is and all this stuff. And it was like, I need you to do this for me. And it was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I got you. I, um. You know, they found out exactly where the phone was purchased at. And I said, oh, my God, can we get on with it? Because I just want to look. I just want the. I just want Knox to have egg all over his face when he realized that it's not Angela who's doing it, okay? I just really want that to fucking happen, all right? And I want him to get reprimanded and him to get punished and probably put off the force because he is still doing stuff undercover that he is not supposed to be doing. He's not even supposed to be working on his case. He wasn't supposed to be working on it in the first damn place. He put himself on there, and then when they told him to get his ass off, he's still doing the shit, okay? He's irritating my nerves. So after that, what wound up happening? Tariq, let me tell you, I am so disappointed that to have street parents, this motherfucker going to... Easily influenced, gonna hook up with Slim. Then they up there talking 50 cents the whole time. You know, when I come from the phone, 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 you know, you can't let nobody tell you. You know, Drain told me what you said. I told Drain what you said and all this stuff. And he was like, you know, you can't let nobody tell you your first mind and all this stuff. I said, nigga, open up your mouth. But then I remember he got shot in it. So he can't really. So he literally is talking through his teeth. And I said, God damn, I'll be so irritated being in the room with him doing that shit. But, um, Basically, they go up in a shoe store and peer pressure like a motherfucker. This nigga can't say no and he trying to, like, I don't know. He's looking for a father figure or some shit like that in Canaan. 
and he just don't realize it because he's not fucking with ghosts no more like that or James, Daddy James. And I'm just sitting here like, what the hell is going on? Because next thing you know, Kanan was like, I see your daddy uh, and your mama got you everything that you need. Because back in the day when we needed something, we just had to take it. Where are you used to steal? I like, and you know, he was talking about Dre too, but he was saying he liked Dre and all that shit, whatever. But he was like, where are you used to steal? And then next thing you know, I'm sitting here like, so this store only has two employees working at the moment. So one employee go out on break. The other employee is helping other people. So Tyree Take is upon himself to get the number. I said this was kind of smart, though. He took the number, put it from the shop that was on the door, put it in his phone, asked for a size 10 and them Jordans that he got, put the Jordans on his feet and put his shoes in the box and then called the phone so that the guy that was helping the person could go over there and answer the phone. And as they was walking out, the other guy was coming in. They just stole a pair of Jordans. I'm sitting here like, whoop his ass. Whoop his ass. I mean, that was cool and all. That was cool. That was slick cool. That was, I was a little impressed. I was a little impressed. <laughs> I said, no, he not. You going to succumb to fucking peer pressure by a grown ass man? Girl, I'm just sitting here like, Tyreek, you're doing the most for me, okay? You're doing the goddamn most. All right? It was just irritating my nerves. Then... Uh, Angela, her people come back, her person come back and tell her, you know, we don't know what the number at. Um, we couldn't find out who was the pay or where they got the phone, um, the, the, the ticket from or whatever. And she was irked about that. Ciao. So after Ghostly, Tasha gets on the phone and calls Tommy and was like, boy, you know, Ghost and set up Milan and all this stuff with Ruiz and, you know, you need to take care of that. You need to, he gonna get everybody fucked up. So basically... Tommy is at Milan's place and he just now, Ruiz just now coming back, okay, from talking with Milan. He's drunk or whatever. They having a good time. Tommy makes up this um, excuse saying that he got another meeting and he's about to go and that he told Pancho, Pancho that he can go ahead and go. And so, if Ruiz, if you need a ride back, you're going to have to come on with me right now. So, of course, Ruiz thinking that he can trust Tommy says, all right, cool. So, Tommy, you know, get him in the car and all of a sudden he just started talking about, you know, loyalty and all this stuff and, you know, people still playing you when they lie to your face and you can't trust people and all this stuff. And at that moment in time, if I was Ruiz, no matter how drunk or semi-drunk I was, I would have jumped out the car and just rolled, okay? Because that conversation did not sound right at all, all right? And they see, you know, Tommy trying to say that the car overheated, okay? And we looking like, all right, what is he about to do? He pulls underneath the bridge and he gets out trying to fix the car. He told him to uh, look at the gun compartment and give him his lighter. Not his lighter, but his flashlight. And he see the gun in there. And so Ruiz didn't think nothing of it because, okay, if he was going to kill me, he would have had his gun on him. Child, he goes give him the flashlight and Tommy basically shanked his ass, okay? I said, ain't this about a bitch? He's like, why did you do this? He said, it ain't me doing it. It's ghosts, okay? I said, whew, this is a lot that's going on in this episode. So, um, Mike finds out that Hugo is dead and... You know, he goes over to his apartment or whatever because Sax was trying to get some information and said he was going to look up some stuff. And Mike said, no, I do it. He go over there to his apartment trying to dust that bitch clean, finds his picture with his woman on there, either his woman or his daughter, okay? And I said, damn, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden, who's sitting outside this apartment or who's sitting outside this address? Greg, Okay. Greg pulls up and he sees Mike coming out. And he like, what the fuck? He noticed that the number seems, you know, familiar. And he pulls it up. And it's one of them informants or whatever. One of Lobo's guys. And he like, what the fuck, Mike? And I said, see, bitch, it ain't fucking, um, what's that girl name? It ain't her. Okay? So, after all of this stuff happens, Tommy meets up with, well, he didn't meet up. He was already there when Ghost came. I don't know where they came to. I think at his at, at Truth or whatever. And he said, you know, you lied to me already two times to my face. And he was like, what you talking about? Ruiz is dead. Now, see, this is my thing. I hope, did Ruiz turn that button off? You know, was he recording? Do y'all do y'all think he was recording? Or did he think when he was walking out the club that he had turned it off before he got into the car with Tommy? Because Tommy was saying a whole bunch of stuff. And he was talking about killing Lobos. And he said he did it with ghosts and all this stuff. And, you know, he was just putting it all out there. Mind you, remember, Ghost told Ruiz, uh, told Ruiz not to get them on tape. Or him on tape saying nothing about them. Okay? So, what y'all think about that? 
mind you, it was Dre that came to the rescue with a stolen car and was helping Tommy out with Reese. I said, oh, shit. They working together. This is cute. This is cute. For how long? You know, enjoy it while it lasts, Dre, because I don't think you got too many days. Um, After that, girl, Tommy basically cussed, cussed him out and said, you know, I told you to let me know what was going on. He was like, you know, with Milan out the picture, it works good for us, both of us. He was like, tell me how it's going to work because I don't see it. He was like, you want to run a drug game? You can run it the way that you want to and I want out. I'm not going to stop. I want out. That's what I'm going to do. I want fucking out. And he was like, all right, let me tell you something. I'm not going by what you say, but if it's a plan, no, I'm not going to kill Milan. But if we're going to make a plan to kill Milan, I'm going to make that plan. I called the shots. And I said, okay, this is why I called. I called the shots. Bitch, Tommy goes over there to Milan. And I was like, I thought you, I, I didn't know you was going to come back this soon. He said, you know, a few days ago, you asked me if I want to use. And he was like, yeah. He was like, well, I am. And we need to kill ghosts. And I said, you know what? Stop playing with me, Tommy. This better be part of your plan. Okay? That's all I got to say. Y'all tell me how you feel about this. And I can't wait till the season finale next week. Child, y'all tell me what y'all think going to happen. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.